Hey everybody, Konodja here. Welcome back to the Assetto Corsa career mode. We are continuing on with the Ferrari 599XX Evo Trofeo. And we are at now Mugello, the third race of the season. Long fast bends, that's what Mugello is all about. The 599XX Evo is a very capable car. But you need to understand and trust its active aerodynamics. That I did not realize, so I am glad I read this. And right turn smoothly, and when you feel the front end washing out a bit, turn some more and let the electronics know that you need more front grip. The results might surprise you. Interesting. I guess, uh, I guess we'll see how that plays out. Alright, with all the time we just spent at this track, granted it was in a Lamborghini, compounded with the fact that, uh, I really kind of enjoy driving this car. Really hoping we can get ourselves a race. Oh, wait, laps here as well. Okay, so I'll keep that fuel pretty high up because I know this thing is. It is a thirsty. Thirsty car. So let's see. Let's turn one's crazy as always. Oh, wow. I was way slow on the lights. Goodbye, everybody. to get to the other side of the track. Oh, you jerk asses. Asses and your jerks. Jerk asses. Restart. Try again. You know, Duck says his... Oh, there it goes. Oh, I need to go like this? Okay. Okay, now I need to go like this. Well, I got one of them to uh, be transparent. Notice that his HUD down there was transferring and mine wasn't. So there you go. Wrong gear. Goodbye, everybody. Oops. Well, we're up to our familiar third place here. It seems to be my home in this series. Ooh. Leader locked him up. Second place. A little contact. No real damage, though. Back here, Diego. This is going to be the turns I have most of the advantage on. Typically not as much on the back half of the track. So you had a little... Whoa, 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 whoa. No time to talk just yet. <laughs> Let's let this sort out. They are so bad on the brakes. So bad. It seems like they're even worse <laughs> in this car than uh, the rest of them. Which doesn't make a bit of sense since this car has really good ABS. Like, I am not having any lockup whatsoever. All right, so now we're out front, and we're gonna try and check out here. I had a little bit of conversation in the comments of the last episode about uh, perhaps waiting to continue this career mode until the next big patch drops, uh, which will be part of the Dream Pack DLC launch and all that kind of stuff, because they are supposedly working on the AI a bunch, and introducing flags and stuff like that. Fixing a lot of the community's complaints so far. And that is very encouraging to see. And I can see why I might want to wait until that kind of update comes along to continue progressing through the career. But at this point, the career is so long, and uh, it's already spanned two or three other patch updates. I think it might be even more interesting to kind of watch the arc of the series as the game progresses. Because at the rate I'm doing it, we'll probably be doing this this career long through even future patches. Uh, they don't even know what's coming. But I do hope, more than anything, uh, the flags and that kind of stuff will help multiplayer. I'm not really interested in multiplayer instead of Corsa. 
I really hope they figure out what's going on with the AI, especially with their, their actual, like, driving performance. They are hitting the lap times, it seems, on some tracks. Uh, but they do this weird thing where they will slam on the brakes, and then they'll let off and accelerate right before the turn, and then they'll, like, tap the brakes on entry. <laughs> it's, it's very strange. Uh, it's extremely hard to predict what they're going to do when then you run into the back of them like I did. Okay, what did it tell us? It told us to put more wheel into it. I don't know that that particularly did anything, other than scrub the front tires a bunch more. I know one thing with this car, it's active aero does not help with uh, oversteer. <laughs> if you're spinning the back tires, it just, just keeps going. That was bad. That was very bad. But I am still, like, totally jinked out here. They are awful at this track, and I don't know why. It seems like any track with a lot of hard braking zones they are particularly struggling at. We got some major ground to make up in this championship, so I will take it. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people I've seen are kind of upset with the fact they are pushing this DLC so hard right now. I mean, it, we're not we're not terribly far gone from the launch. You know, it's only been a month or two, really. Oof! Seems to be losing the front end of this car. I wonder if that damage has anything to do with it. It could. Not to do what they say and just keep putting more wheel in it. This car has a really, a really slow steering rack to begin with. So maybe more wheel is all it, all it craves. It just feels wrong, it sounds wrong, and it probably is wrong. But yeah, I don't know, I don't know that I particularly agree with their stance on that either. I mean, I guess the the problem is, they have all of this content that they kind of got late to the game, uh, right before release, and now all that stuff's done, so why wait? If you have all the, you have the ring ready, you have a bunch of cars ready, I guess why wait to release it? It's not like you can't play the game without it. I just really do wish they would address some of the bigger gameplay issues, because I've noticed the, the tide is starting to turn a little bit. Uh, generally, reception of Assetto Corsa was very good in early access, but ever since its release, you know, the, the opinion is starting to shift a little bit, just through the bit of the community that I, uh, I reside in. isn't terribly much, but they are out there. <laughs> I have seen the, the the musings of people somewhat being upset with it. It was still worth the money, in my opinion. It's still trying to fill a void that has kind of been missing in the sim racing world. Uh, to me, it has really kind of taken the place of Live for Speed. It has a lot of that spirit to it, it kind of has a little, little bit of that driving style to it. Uh, just with a much more licensed and corporate kind of feel to it. The biggest thing that I think is missing, that I don't really see a big opinion on, is tracks. This game is way, way short on tracks. And they're putting all this focus on the Nurburgring. It's only one track. Granted, it's huge and huge and very big, but it's still just one track. Uh, the, one of the biggest downfalls of this whole career mode has been... Uh, okay, so the next series is up. Now it's the same six tracks in a different car. <laughs> 
and that's kind of the same problem that First Speed always had. There's only there's only so much you can run on the Blackwood circuit. And then, you know, it'll be alright, well the city circuit's getting popular this month, and then you get tired of that one. Uh, there's, there's not many to work through. Eventually you get pretty fatigued on all of them. But they don't seem to be overly concerned about that. Uh, especially since, I mean, the career mode's pretty much fleshed out now. It'd be hard to go back and change out all the tracks after the fact. Unless they just intend to add even more. Which I wouldn't complain about necessarily. I would say, say we lost a little front arrow in that collision. It doesn't feel like the front end is very well planted. Boy, I don't think I needed eight laps here. I don't understand why, why so slow. I don't even see them. Like, they're gone from the mirrors. They're just gone. I might just uh, skip through to the end of this race if uh, nothing else interesting happens. Okay, so yep, yeah, that's pretty much how the rest of the race played out. I spun and lost 10 seconds and I never even saw anybody else, so I'm going to say we we won in pretty dramatic fashion here. <laughs> Crash. Um, yeah, yeah, they still haven't even finished. They're still going. Still going. Still going. Maybe, maybe someday they'll finish. Maybe, maybe someday. 34 seconds. Wow. Okay, now we head off to uh, the Nürburgring a GP track. Don't get too excited. It's not the ring. And let's see. This track is uh, another one that's really kind of difficult on uh, the aero front and the, the tire front. Another 8 lap race, so a lot of fuel is needed. Uh, and there's not really anything you can adjust with this car, so we're kind of just stuck with what we got to trust our active arrow. Hopefully the AI are being a little smarter here. I know they struggle with turn one in this track, but other than that, they seem to do pretty well. So on the start again. So much tire spin. Goodbye, everybody. We are now up to second place in the standings. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> it's... It's like they just don't know when to break. And right up to third. It seems to be the place I, uh, I end up most of the time. After the turn one debacle. This is the difficult set of turns right here. Especially for a car that is nose heavy and understeery like this one is. certainly has a very strange balance to it. I have, uh, I have not been driving cars like this in quite a while. I've been asked what uh, what series I am going to move on to. Ooh, that was over rev and a half. Oh yeah, that did, that did quite a bit of damage to the engine. Whoops. Uh, what series I'm going to move on to next in iRacing after the MX-5. A lot of people kind of want or seem to be pulling for the GT3 series. Which would be cool because that is a series that if I completed I would move up at license rank. I'm not sure I'm quite ready for that. GT3 racing is very, from what I've seen, and I've watched quite a bit of it, it's extremely high contact for some reason. Oops. Okay, that worked. 
that worked okay. I don't know why it did not penalize me for that. But I am not going to complain. I'll come back here with Diego. Uh, I've been kind of wanting to go back to Star Mazda. I tried to do a season of Star Mazda, and uh, I thought that might have been too deep. And I really struggled with that car a lot. And I ended up actually, that was kind of the series that made me wash out of iRacing the first time. Then I came back and went to the McLaren and did the, at the time it was the Grand Am series. I enjoyed that a little bit more. I overall didn't particularly love the way the McLaren drove. It actually reminds me a lot of this car. That weird understeer on on entry and uh, mid-turn and then snappy oversteer on exit. Just, which is bizarre because these are two like completely different cars. That's uh that's kind of where that is hanging in my mind right now, either Star Mazda or GT3. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Star Mazda, they're basically entry-level open-wheel cars, uh, rotary engines. A little bit slower than a GT3 car, but not terribly so. I'd say they corner as well, if not better. Why that second gear is really short, huh? That's why I'd like a real tack, please. <laughs> And while we're talking about iRacing, as always... What are you doing, Diego? What are you doing? Okay, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Get me uh, all sorts of screwed up. Well, we gotta hold the dig out of now, don't we? Alright, that, that conversation's gonna have to hold on a minute. I'm gonna have to drive my butt off for a lap or two here. I think I can get back up there. Felt like I was way faster, but I don't have anybody around me to go off of. I know I'm faster than one. This car also has a lot of, I don't know if maybe the suspension is too stiff or what. It has a lot of that kind of bucking and bobbling around at slow speeds and tight, tight corners. Pointed in the right direction now. We're on our way back up. Just gotta keep it, keep it on the gray stuff. That was the correct point to hit second gear. Yeah, they're they're not terribly far away, so I'm not not overly concerned. So what was I gonna say? Okay. Back to IRC. I was live streaming practice, and uh, Intrepid Racer had a very interesting kind of. What are those? Uh, oh my god, what am I doing? What are those what if kind of questions that may be getting skewed right now? Uh, we wanted to know. What am I doing? I'm driving like, like absolute garbage. I got so spoiled last race with uh, running away with it. Okay. I'm like way too late on the brakes, dude. I'm glad there's eight laps now. I'm gonna need them, it looks like. So we wanted to know if in a in a world where you could either have iRacing's complete setup with its multiplayer, basically uh, how it how it handles the races and whatnot, but with either iRacing physics or a set of course of physics, which one would you have? iRacing physics are more difficult, I would say. To handle in most applications. 
when it comes to actual race cars, I think it does better than does a set of Corsa. And the GT3 cars and cars like this, well, maybe not necessarily this car. The Formula cars, uh, the overall race cars and a set of Corsa seem a little bit overly stable. I think maybe their grip is a little bit um, too high or they just they just feel a, a little bit too stable to me. Um, in iRacing, the road cars and the cars that are less aero dependent, uh, like the MX-5, I've always had a little bit of a strange handling characteristic to me. It's like it's like the physics engine doesn't handle slow speeds very well. That that's the that's the still still with this crazy breaking in here. Uh, that's that's the cusp of the problem there. In like chicanes like that and just overall very slow speed situations. It's like the tires are no longer connected to the ground. That's that's the kind of feeling you get in iRacing. And when you're losing control or having to save a car, the physics engine also seems to freak out then, too. Like the AI are freaking out and breaking here. Um, it makes a car extremely difficult to save. I see a lot of situations where people can't, people and me, cannot save cars that I think should be pretty easily savable. Because it seems like the grip threshold when the car is not on a racing line and going straight falls off in a oh man, very dramatic fashion. I guess I need to start doing this thing they keep telling me to do is put more wheel into it damage all over this car too, which is not helping. So yeah, this and a set of course uh, the the physics seem to handle those low speed situations much better, and it seems to handle the out of control situations better, if you will. Uh, the the sliding, the having to correct, being able to correct the car basically. not being able to correct his cars <laughs> uh, understeer right now. Or my poor breaking points. So it's a really tough choice. In the end though, I think iRacing does just a little bit better of a job of feeling like a real world car when it comes to actual racing. When you're actually hitting your marks and stuff like that actually like going 100% it really does have this sensation, the right kind of feeling uh, it gives you the right feedback and all, uh, have the brakes gone on this car? what has happened? have I turned into an AI car? is that what's happened? <laughs> So yeah, I would, I would have to say, go ahead and stick with I racing physics and I racing. I said, of course, the physics and I said, of course, not. they're two completely different approaches to sim racing. And it's always been that way. I mean, these are two long-standing physics engines. I don't know if everybody realizes that, but I racing, I think most people realize, is based off of Pyrus physics engine, which dates back to Grand Prix Legends. What is going on, car? It just won't do anything. And uh, it, it still carries a lot of a lot of the same feelings I had in uh, GPL and NASCAR 2003. It still carries a lot of the same kind of driving dynamics. To me, it hasn't changed dramatically much since then. Obviously, it has improvements, refinements. 
I, I have lost my mind. My marbles, they are gone. Stop car, please. Thank you. And then this game is based primarily off of a net car. That physics emits. I would say it's had a little bit more dramatic of a change or improvement, but it also hasn't had as many iterations. They spent a lot more time without a new title before before they went ahead and uh, released this engine again. So it's changed quite a bit since then. But it too still has a lot of the same kind of feeling to it. I didn't like it then, and I do like it now. Uh, so obviously they've made some strides. Versus... iRacing. If I loaded up NASCAR 2003, threw in the Trans Am mod or the GTP mod, I would transition back to it instantly. I, I, it's just... it's that close to how the handling is in iRacing. And I think that's kind of how sim racing will always be. There will always be a particular driving style you learn for the sim. And it's not going to be the same as what you learn for real life. Breaking points, on the other hand, you should be able to learn. Unlike me, who is not, because I don't know. I really don't. So does sim racing then not help in real life? That's, I wouldn't say that. It's just, uh, to be good in sim racing, you have to drive differently than you would in real life. Uh, if you try and drive a car exactly like you would in real life, uh, you're going to have a bad time. That's my, that's my current standpoint on physics. I used to be kind of a um, elitist about it, and honestly me five years ago probably would not have even enjoyed a set of courses here, uh, but I've kind of just come to the acceptance that sim racing is not going to be real life. If you just take them for what they are, you can you can extract the good parts out of them and learn to enjoy them. And holy crap, we're finally on a green delta. It's taken eight laps, but I think I may have figured out this car on this track. Or at least this car with all the body damage it has. I see you up there, but I don't think I'm going to get you. Oh yeah, I forgot about all the engine damage too. That's probably not helping. <laughs> not helping those straightaway speeds. My toes are also freezing. I should have worn socks today. Bare feet on metal pedals and it's cold out. This turn, man, it's catching me out every time. Over rev. I think we might need a rebuild after this race, guys. Sorry. Well, we got closer, but not close enough. So looks like we're gonna be losing some points to the leader of this race. We still got quite a ways to go in this season. Hopefully, hopefully next episode might brain starts working again and I can actually hit some uh, some apexes. Alright, well that's going to do it for another episode here in the Assetto Corsa career mode. Sorry for being such a derp in the second race, but <laughs> hopefully uh, you were able to follow along a little bit with my, my thoughts on the, the current physics engines available. Uh, we're not going to talk about ISIs or R factor or anything like that because I'm completely biased against them. Thanks as always for watching, I will see you 
next time.